in a world where equality is just another euphemism for mediocrity, where participation is more highly valued than achievement, where just enough to get by is the new standard of excellence. There is a small minority of people who fight back against such apathy, who struggle daily to reach new heights. These brave few are the hope for the future, the bright shining light for the next generation. They are the ones who will lead us to the places we have never dreamed of, to the undiscovered country, to reach goals only a few can even begin to imagine. Unfortunately, none of those people could be here tonight, so kick back and relax. Prepare yourself for several hours of fun, friendship, fascinating conversation, and fabulous music. All those Fs, that's an alliteration and kind of a radio trick. Speaking of radio, you're listening to the most popular radio station in the history of broadcast radio, at least among stations that originate from Chris's living room. It's Curious Times. Your host is a curious listener. Here she is, Chris. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Curious Times. It's Wednesday, June 7th. Woo. I cannot speak how fast this is going. Only 14 more days, and it's the longest, uh, most daylight, and then it goes downhill from there. Um, Barbara DeLong is here. I do have a show note uh, here. Um, I got a message from Selva, so she said no show for the next two weeks. Uh, next two Fridays, and so, uh, must be darts or something like that, so that's the next two, uh, Thursday, Friday, Jen Young is on vacation, <clears throat> next two Thursdays and Fridays are open, so I'll see if I can find something, uh, for those spots, maybe just do music or something, you know, chill, chill out or do something. Uh, but I'll keep you guys uh, apprised of the situation. Um, so Barbara's here. She hosts her own show, Nightlight, on uh, Freedom Slips, uh, a.k.a. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Uh, she also created her own Oracle deck, <laughs> the Cosmic Deck of Initiation. <laughs> I, I just love having having the loot, you know what I mean? Uh, and I can show it show it live. And um of course these uh these these cards are unique in that well they're very beautiful uh mandalas on each card, but also they're round and it's very unique, very, very awesome. So love that. <clears throat> it was a great idea, a great idea to do round uh cards. Um and because uh, life is life is but a dream, but life is also full circle and uh everything in the indigenous uh, as well as around, is a circle. It's a circle. You could, how do you confuse a little Indian kid? Tell him to go sit in the certain in the corner at, at, in the teepee. <laughs> there is no corner, right? Um, anyway, with over 50 years of experience or so, um, she Barbara provides uh, her seek, those who seek her, her assistance with excellent readings and guidance. You can check out her website, which has just an amazing amount of uh, the most interesting uh, research information uh, on a wide variety of topics at www.barbaradelong.com. And check out this um, uh, documentary that Barbara uh, is uh, narrating and part of, which is uh, called Secrets of the Stones on YouTube. And you can just uh, uh, search Secrets of the Stones on YouTube, <laughs> or you can go to YouTube and you can look for the user Oracle Tracker, Oracle Tracker. And so with all of that said, let's go get Barbara. Hi, Barbara. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm good, good. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing about how the meditation stuff all went. It's It's been, um, I have to say, much more amazing than I anticipated. I knew it would be. I knew it. That's a come <laughs> I was uh, um, <clears throat> It's um now I've led meditations for probably forty years. And there was a seventeen year time frame where I did one every week in my house. So leading meditations is something that I am an old hand at. But um when we started these 
pinpointing places on the Giza Plateau and and going into them and um, first of all the energy is different from any energy I've ever felt before which mm. which is kind of amazing and the other thing is usually when you do a meditation you take people someplace so they can meet you know a guide and a relative or, or whatever and these meditations take you to a place and get you into places where you couldn't get normally and then the you know um asking you to look at the walls look at the this look at the that and and then give us the information back and um it's it's really i i think fascinating because he doesn't tell me a lot about the different sites he he gives me the gps and he gives me a little background and which I read, but then I ignore. And um, this last time we were in, I mean, we've we've gone underground because the sites were underground. So I had to take us beneath beneath the surface of the ground, and there there were often no no ways to get there other than to just travel there. So um, it's the, the 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 material that people are getting is fascinating. And <clears throat> in the last one. Um, we were in a, a tunnel of some sort, and um, part of it was, I said, you know, if you look on the walls, you see, you see there are places where there are indentations for handprints, and, you know, I said, find one that fits your hand, and put your hand in it, and then they felt energy, and they felt stuff, and then, um, you know, we went to the other side to find the, the other hand, and, and um, to balance the energetic that we were getting, and afterwards, I, I asked people, I said, you know, how did that feel? What did that feel like to you? And, you know, they were giving me really cool information. And when I asked Bill, who doesn't want to lead the meditations, he just wants to go and meditate. Right. You know, yeah. I said, well, how about you, Bill? And he said, well, a little weird. And I said, putting your hand on the stone wall is weird. He said, well, I only had three fingers, and I was green. And... <laughs> I said, oh. okie doke. <laughs> so, wow. so what we're doing is, among other things, we're, we're hitting, in many cases for some people, past lives, and then for others, we're interdimensionally shifting. So, right. um, And we do know that under the Giza Plateau, there are several levels and series of, of labyrinths and tunnels, and, and, and a lot of tunnels that black ops are using today. And... So, um, and there were places where he couldn't do his ground penetrating radar, and, and we've been able to find the channels there as well, which is kind of fascinating. He has the map of where they are. He hasn't been able to really get permission to dig or to drill to validate it. So the meditations are going into those areas, and um, gosh, in a couple of places, we validated things that he knew, but he but nobody else did know, which which again is fascinating. And some of the, the um, pictorials that are on the walls um, are not hieroglyphs, but they are pictographs of some sort, and, and they weren't, you know, they weren't, you know, uh, like, like the, um, <clears throat> they weren't the, whatchamacallit of the dead. It wasn't, these, these places we're going had nothing to do with burials. So that so that a lot of the the stuff on the walls and the floors and everything actually um, were directions for the future as opposed to um, giving you information about the past. Wow, that's very interesting. It's it's really cool. Yeah. No kidding. So <clears throat> now just, now that we've um, rest to the end of the book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there might be somebody there uh, listening who doesn't have any idea what the hell we're talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's my fault um, because I just want to get to the end of the book, and then and then we'll catch everyone up with. Uh, so what you have this group that's kind of new still, and and you have this. Um, it's, yeah, it's very new. It's very open. It's called Star Points because Bill has used. 
uh, star maps to locate on the Giza Plateau places where temples and, and um, obelisks and tunnels um, are, are, are supposed to be but haven't been discovered yet. So what we've done is we've put together an international meditation group that is open to anyone who would like to belong to it. All you need to do is send me your name and ask to be included, and you will get the the um, the link to the meditation, and you'll get the star map to to go with it, so you'll know where we're going. And um, and that's at barbaradelong at gmail dot com. Um, and basically, all we ask is that you you write notes down after we've done a meditation and send them to me, so that we can correlate everything that everybody's getting. And um, kind of get some sort of understanding of what kind of material we're really digging into because basically it's extraterrestrial and and interdimensional because where we're going is not the surface stuff, it's beneath the surface. So, and the energy is different from anything I've ever experienced. And, you know, I've been around the block a few times, but, but it's been, it's been very exciting and, um, so, so it's and it's done as a closed group, so that this is not something you can just drop in on. You have to actually commit to actually being there to get the to get the address and everything for the meditation. And giving your feedback, uh, and giving your feedback and sharing your experiences uh, with the group as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so, it, so it sounds like it's it's. Um, a, a huge success, and so it sounds like you know you guys could possibly uh, down the road branch out to other other destinations. We plan on it. We're gonna we're gonna go to the Arctic. We should go to Mars. <clears throat> Try to go to Mars. <laughs> I, I, I think I'd like to keep it to this to this planet at this moment. <laughs> I would want to go there because you could beat the you could beat the others. <laughs> oh, I, I I'm not so sure that there aren't already people there. <laughs> oh, that's, true. that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, the whole um, the whole portal. Um, what the hell was that called? Uh, there was a whole special. You you do know William Stillings? Um, the Have name you? sounds familiar. So he would often, uh, way back in the day, he came on my show a number of times, and um, there, uh, it's the same project that uh, Eisenhower's granddaughter was involved with. Um, I can't remember now; it's been so long. And they were like um, uh, using like portals basically to get to, to Mars. And he 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 says that there's all kinds of um, different species living, coexisting. In, and I was asking, you know, like, so is there actually thriving community? Like, is there, you know, like barter or trade or this kind of, you know, and uh, they're all, they all seem to be getting along. And I go, well, wait till, you know, wait till too many humans get there. That'll change. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, and so Project, um, his that father, was, what's that? No, I said my project is Project Star Points. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there, there's uh, quite possibly uh, already people there coming and going, coming and going. <laughs> well, that could, that could very easily be. I think the thing that that fascinates me the most is that um, <clears throat> what seems to be happening is that Everybody who's involved, while they are especially in the group energy, um, their consciousness is expanded, and and there are consciousness shifts going on in the people that are involved. Now that doesn't mean that you know they're they're walking sideways or anything like that, but it does mean that for some reason this energy and the places that we're going. Um, helps to open portals within each individual to the level that it's appropriate for them to 
um, transcend, ascend, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, so it's been um, it's been very exciting. It's, it's not exactly what I had thought was going to happen, but then, you know, that's the exciting part about stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I I really do look forward to hearing um, about further. I think that's really interesting, uh, and I have no doubt that some of the people uh, have found perhaps a, a, a hand mark that they themselves left there. You know what I mean? Well, I think what's really interesting is that, you know, my my expectations were – Far different from what actually is happening, which which is which is very exciting, but you know nothing stops you, Chris, from signing on. No, I I know I know I have, but I I, I don't want until I can actually commit. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the one, you know, and then uh, so. Well, the cool thing the, the cool thing about this is anybody who is a member of the group has access to. All the meditations we've done, you can you can listen to them in archive, and the energy is exactly the same as whether you're doing it with us when we do it, or if you're doing it in archive. The energy is the same, so that so that a lot of people aren't able to be there at three o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday, but you know they got seven days and twenty four hours a day, yada yada, that they can you know listen to it at their leisure. So. You know, that's really a very exciting aspect of it, too. And if they want to go back and repeat it, they can do that because they have the archive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they can, they can, they can, um, so then they would just submit to you, uh, like a written, written report then for the feedback part of it? No, I mean, <clears throat> no, it's not. And, and I think some people are thinking that's that's what we expect. No, just notes on what you saw and felt. It doesn't have yeah. to be, you know, an essay or anything like that. Some people just send me three or four sentences. Some people send me a lot more. But um, it's it's what did you see? What did you feel? What impressed you? And some people <clears throat> in the first one, I got them to a point, and I, then I. Then I said, you know, feel free to wander, and you know, I'll call you back when it's time to return. And I gave them five minutes to wander, and um, we, I found that almost everybody suddenly had, you know, we're just sitting in darkness. And so now I talk everybody through the entire thing, so that my voice is there, so that they have something to hang on to. You know, I. I kind of thought that most people were real heavy-duty meditators, but that's not the case. So for those people that aren't, that, that, and we're in uncharted territory because I don't believe anybody's done anything quite like this before. Right. But th this next week we're going to go into the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid. I'm going to put everybody in that sarcophagus there and see what happens to them. Wow. <laughs> and see what happens to them, <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to fry anybody, but I have a feeling they're going to have some very unique experiences. Yeah, for sure. Because, of course, I'm describing the feel of the of the sarcophagus. I'm I'm describing the smell. I'm describing the whole thing, so that so that even you know, and 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 of course they have charted exactly where we are, so that. Um, by the time we get to where we're going is in the meditation, they are very much definitely, um, I guess meditation is a, is a slight form of hypnosis. So that, you know, my voice takes them there and they trust me and, and that's where we go. That's Barbara DeLong at gmail.com. Yep. That people would write to you. Um, and uh, so good, good. How's the radio show going? Radio show's going well. I'm I'm really um, having a lot of fun with it. I'm meeting a lot of really cool people, and um, it's it's an adventure. Not so much doing readings. I I only really do readings once a month, and that's with Michelle Avante, who is the astrologer that comes on board. But um, you know, it's it's been 
I think far more exciting to do the interviews to get people to to get information out there. And yeah. you know, and every now and then um one of the books I have to read is enough to just, you know, <laughs> I want, I want to scream, but um for the most part all the books that I've read have been have been I've learned a lot. Um I've got Frank Joseph coming on and his book is is on dolphins and he's written Wow. He's written 30 or 40 books on metaphysical stuff and Atlantis and all sorts of stuff. And I kind of wanted to touch on Atlantis, but his newest book is on dolphins, so we're going to the dolphins. Well, that's interesting because uh, now, is, would he happen to be one of these folks that talks about dolphins being interdimensional? Um, <clears throat> among other things, he feels that there are relatives. Yeah. So, you know, I haven't I haven't read the book yet. I will have read it by the time I, I speak with him. Um, he It may be. Um, I know that, that 30 or 40 years ago, um, I was involved in a group who were going, to, um, the woman who ran the group um, had permission to go to the Mystic Aquarium and work with the dolphins there on, on having... Um, intuitives try to communicate with the dolphins and part of the part of the whole thing was you know I was fine with going to Mystic Aquarium I was fine to getting in the water with the dolphins um because I was selected as one of the intuitives um but then she wanted us to be able to scuba dive and she wanted to go deep sea with the dolphins as well and I was very hesitant about that because I don't like to get my face wet. And but but then she also said that we had to keep journals and that we had to turn the journals into her, and we weren't allowed to use any of the material in the journals for publication ourselves. And that's when I backed out. And oh, yeah. um, she did do the project. She did publish a book. Um, an interesting lady, but. Um, you know, I I was kind of I was getting poetry from the dolphins, so I may not have been you know exactly what she was looking for, and I certainly would have bucked her in a lot of things. So, it was much smarter to not get involved. Yeah, for sure. Um, I heard a show years back, and I'm not clear on the details. I'd have to go back and and try and Google it and do some research on it again, but. Um, you know, that I kind of got the sense that, that because some people talk, think about um, Bigfoot or Sasquatch as also being like an interdimensional traveler. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so this was the lingering idea that I got uh, regarding this person's um, perspective on dolphins. And um, that's interesting to me because one, one is a land... Um, traveler and one is a water you know traveler and so that that was really like as I sit and think about that you know what I mean that they would send to highly intelligent um for lack of better way to put it animals you know what I mean um well to dolphins be the, you know are they breathe air they yeah and yeah. and they they're mammals yeah so and as far as Bigfoot goes I am firmly convinced that 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 they exist, but I do believe they're interdimensional, because and yeah. that's probably why we've never found bones or scat or anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I'm right with you on that on that for sure. Um, but it's almost as though like you know that the dolphins are the the wisdom keepers of the water and the the Sasquatch are you know. Because I find that they're probably both smarter than us. <laughs> well, and, you know, uh, yeah, and I don't think you know that they they do all sorts of searching for them with with um, you know night vision stuff and everything. Um, but I don't get the feeling that they're they're um, aggressive. You know, they no. certainly haven't been banded together to wipe out towns or anything. So, yeah. I, you know, I think we should just leave them alone. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's just my own personal belief system. 
Yeah. But, yeah. but you, you never know. They, they. I, I think that that they just drop in, and this is their kind of like this is where they come fishing, you know, <laughs> and they want to be left alone, and and we're more yeah. or less. The, the annoying right. insects that get in their way. So let me ask you, because, you know, you have, you know, you do you do a lot of, like, past life readings and things like this. And um, I have, uh, you know, somebody came across uh, somebody that does a show somewhere. And, you know, they, they, they all have, you know, like, we have doppelgangers within a certain lifetime, but... Lots of times you'll see have somebody that will have an appear well a close resemblance to you know somebody uh, from history, um, but you know that they're not necessarily biologically connected. Um, then people they they will some opportunists sometimes will try and sell the idea that they're reincarnated of that person, and I just have a you know a thought in my mind that it's just so highly unlikely that somebody would um have another come back in another lifetime with exact identical physical appearance. You know what I mean? Like what what are your thought, thoughts on that? I I don't believe it's 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 yeah. valid at all. I think um yeah. our spirit comes back and it has some yeah. characteristics certainly. That, that that's you know we have today, but certainly not totally the personality because you know we could be male, female, or or whatever. But um, as far as genetics or or physical characteristics, I don't believe that at all. I, I believe every lifetime we take on a totally different form, and mm-hmm. and, the, and we don't repeat. It's it's sort of I, I've often equated it to. When I was younger, every winter we had to get a new coat because we'd grown out of the old coat. And I do believe that a lifetime is very similar to a coat we've grown out of. We may hang it in our closet. We may look at it from time to time, but we don't wear it anymore. So that there are memories of it, but we, we're not going to recreate it because that coat represented a time frame that is now past that we've grown through. As far as... Um, resembling a historical figure. I mean, there are lots of people that, that, you know, with makeup can, can you know, appear to be very similar to. I, I did a thing at Mark Twain's home, and there was a, a an actor there portraying him, and I got to tell you, he looked like Mark Twain. But, I mean, spit an image, but wasn't. I mean... There are only so many variations on a the theme. There are going to be some people that will have the eyes of or the nose of or have a similar stature to. But but exactly, no. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen. Well, I was talking about, um, you know, like as we all have. Um, so I've had some situations in this lifetime where um, I have been told that I look ident- identical to another person so, so that they're actually like within my age range, if you know what I mean. So I, I look so much like them. But then I had come across the the situation where, um, here's this old woman here, mm-hmm. and this is her much younger, mm-hmm. so before I was alive, and this picture is pretty damn close to how what I look like. Um, and, uh, I have a better picture. I have a pic, I have a copy of that somewhere on my computer, but my, so the point was that, um, uh, you know, that there's going to be, I don't know, maybe there's only so many <laughs> characteristics to go around, you know, like uh, what we, but, what we but you at. have genetically, you have tendencies towards certain features. Well, sure, but you know, here's a person theoretically that I have no relation to biologically at all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and I was trying to use that as an example of, but but I and that I feel that it's just absolutely nonsense that somebody would some who was it that other one that did Ickle or uh, one of these spiritual types that goes on the big big tours, talking tours, uh, 
that claims that he's um reincarnation of uh who was help me out you guys um uh if Amy was here, she would know who I was trying to talk about. Um, he's, you know, one of these guys that everyone has heard of, and he looks like somebody in the past, and he's trying to come off as though that he's, uh, he's that I guy. I know who you're talking about. I remember seeing something. Just kick, it kind of, like, kicks me off, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and so, um... Edgar Casey, he, he, isn't it? Yeah. Edgar Casey, uh, he looks like him, Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you but, can look like somebody that doesn't mean, but but physically yeah. you can look like somebody that doesn't mean you are them. That's right, exactly right. That's and that's the point I was trying to illustrate with with this doppelganger. Here, I'll put it up. I'll put it up on the I found it on my computer. Um, <clears throat> uh, with this this situation with this older woman, uh, and and so. So they're like, this is me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's not me. Uh, like, this is pretty damn close to, uh, you know, including the cowlick hair and everything. Like, I mean, if I had my hair in the same style or whatever, um, that's a pretty close, um, uh, pretty close resemblance to me. And and yet it was just simply this woman in her younger years. I don't, if, see, uh, I don't see the similarity. Oh, it's absolutely me. Uh, of course, you didn't know me when I was younger, but like that. Oh, I, somewhere, somewhere in my, uh, I, somewhere I have a picture of myself almost in that same, um, pose. with that same expression and everything. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And uh, and so now in 2004, she was 80. Um, in 2004, it's now, uh, so I would have been like 40, um, in 2004, I would have been like, say, 40, 37 or so, and that was her 80th birthday then, so that would have been like 40 years before she was, this would have been, you know, this picture of her younger would have been before I was born definitely before I was born. Okay. And so I wouldn't have been alive on the earth yet. Um when 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 this woman was this age. And um and so uh that's exactly the point I'm trying to describe though is that you can have very be almost spitting image, very similar in appearance, but don't mean you're that person. And um I often talk about too like the like, I think that, like, these family trees and stuff like this, that's important for our own current biology, you know, our own current, like, biology. So, like, um, health issues, you know what I'm saying? Like, who am I related to and what did I inherit in that way biologically, right? Yeah. But going much further back, I don't find – so, if, if I'm related to um, – you know, King Henry the Eighth or something stupid. Um, in this lifetime, that merely doesn't mean anything because I was probably alive and on this earth when King Henry the Eighth was alive, and maybe you were. I was a Chinese dude in a rice field somewhere. <laughs> well, you, you're talking you're talking apples and oranges here. You know, one is a genetic family history, oh, and you know, not 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 taking reincarnation into consideration, and the other is reincarnation, and hmm. that's a whole other ball of wax. Um, but if you take and, and let's say you were related to King Henry the Eighth. And and if you if you look at the fact that um, you have 23 chromosomes from your mother, 23 chromosomes from your father, that means you get you got you know those 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 23 are are then split in half again for the grandparent or in 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 not in half but um, you know um, to to your mother's mother and father and then their mother and fathers and by the time you go back that many generations 
I mean, yeah. it's obscene. I mean, yeah. I I did the I did the DNA testing for um, through through Ancestry, and you know, yeah. I did it because everybody else that I knew did it, and they all had great surprises, and I kept saying. I've done my genealogy. I'm I'm as white as they come. I mean, yeah. I'm so white it's boring. I am, yeah. you know, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and and you know, um, I'm, I'm what do they call it? Eastern European. So I I'm just I'm just boring. So somebody gave me the 23 and Me, and I thought this was a waste of money, but it was a gift, so I did it. And I'm 2% Native American Indian. Yeah. I I mean, I figure that anybody that's in North America who has, has, has a few generations of, of family here, you know, uh, that were uh, in North America, that there's there's some something there. <laughs> you know I, I mean? yeah, my, my, my family goes back to the late 1500s in this area. So, so in other words, if I cut my finger, that drop of blood is all the Indian that's in me. So, yeah. you know, it's gone. But again, like, you know, I would expect that there would also be some um, uh, African American as well in most people, you know, in the United States. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I was looking yeah. for that, too. I thought that that would be a cool as well. Um, yeah. Because it makes you more American. To be honest with you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, absolutely. The only purebred, like people, they think they're pure, the only purebreds are like, say, somebody that's coming from, you know, some. Like I would think that in China or places like that, there would be much higher percentage of um, inbreeding. Not inbreeding, but you know what I mean, like um, less dilution. If, if you will, no, but you had, you had the Mongols, you had all of those people flooding in. From the war and everything else like that, you also had, you know what I mean, you had some some uh, Native, uh, North American war dudes up there uh, in Asian country. Uh, the, the, only, uh, the only place and, I can think of that would probably have pretty pure strains would be the the people on Easter Island. Because they didn't yeah. have, you know, any visitors for a very long time. Right. So. Yeah. But in, in North America, it's ludicrous uh, for, you know, anybody to. I love it when they, like, have to try to convince, like, as, as if, but, yeah, like, you know, as if they have to, it's more important to them to be. Pure, pure, pure bread or something like that. You know what I mean? Like oh, I'm all good. <clears throat> yeah, I'm nine fifty-seven here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I really fact, think I truly believe that the that the greater the variety of the genetic input, the healthier and more intelligent the person is. See, and uh, it was through Lizzie, really, like well, initially, but then uh, through finding uh, through. Con I was in contact with uh, one of my dad's brothers uh, a number of years back, and um, I don't know any of those guys either uh, in the family, but um, and he sent me some information on the family tree. Up until then, like, uh, Liz she had to give me this reading a long time back, and she's all like, oh, I'm seeing, like, a German uniform. I'm like, yeah, I go, like, I've been told I'm everything but German. You know what yeah. I mean? Lizzie thinks that it could be Russian or something. He, she was like... Well, but okay, let's just move on, right? Kind of thing. And so, um, so lo, lo and behold, and she gave a name David. And so lo and behold, I get this family tree information, and my own grand, my dad's dad, so my grandfather, his father, and his father, so great grandfather and great great grandfather were both named David. And like I did not know that. <laughs> and. So, uh, and there were Ger like there were German ancestry there, and I'm all like, what? <laughs> so I like I'm I am even German, you know. And, well, it, it um, is interesting. Yeah, so uh, I guess that made sense to me after because they put the biggest emphasis in my dad's side on on this um, uh, English or British, you know what I mean? 
and um, said that the name originated as uh, as uh, Nightingale and then morphed over time. Um, the last name, and uh, then became Rosignale and then became something else. And um, uh, so again, uh, anybody who's from uh, London or the UK might well easily have German ancestry, right? Sure. Yeah. And uh, since, like, the Queen and her whole family is, like, German, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Well, yeah, the Queen is, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, right, the Queen, yeah. Uh, and, well, isn't, uh, isn't so Philip is, no, it, Philip is a different... Um, <laughs> not, I'm not so sure. That makes sense to me, but like I've like I've got like well, of course we all know the native um, French, Russian, uh, Irish, British, Scottish, uh, German. Um, those are the ones off the top of my head that I can think. Of. Oh, I, did I say French and French? Yeah. And. No wonder I'm such a conflicted person. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh and so because here you have the the you know, um I'm Metis and so here you have the uh, the white people killing off the Indians and I'm like a little bit of each kind of thing and and uh and then you had the French versus the British and that was not a good thing, right? They didn't like each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm like all full of all of this, uh, all of this conflict, and uh, probably ancestors of mine were having, you know, relationships with people that they weren't supposed to be having relationships with, you know. Yes. <laughs> and so anyhow, no wonder I'm all messed up. But uh, but yeah, no. But so back to that that question, which is, uh, I just like my bullshit detector goes crazy when someone says to me, oh, here, this person is reincarnated person of that person. I'm all like, no, no. And the, or it's not that they can't be the reincarnation of a, of that person, but not they can't use as their rationale, I'm the spitting image of, and that's how come I know I'm the reincarnated person. Like, you wouldn't have both, I don't think. You know what I mean? Like, No, you, the genetics just doesn't, don't allow for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I knew you would side with me on that, Barbara DeLong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that there are some people that just, you know, shovel the BS on so so thick you just have to back off and say, oh, come on, get a life. You know, really, I'm sorry. Yeah. But the guy that says he, he really believes that he is, is Edgar Casey. um, you know, he, I, I mean, there is a likeness there. There's certainly an, a likeness. However, Edgar Casey never went for any any kind of. Um, um, he he didn't he didn't seek glory. He was here to serve people, and if he was the reincarnation of Edgar Casey, then he would be helping people free of charge instead of going around and trying to ride on K Casey's coattail. David Wilcock. David uh -huh. Wilcock. Yeah, he's the guy that talks a lot about, um, I think, aliens and two timelines and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah, he's on Ancient Aliens a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and like a lot of the st a lot of that stuff is also a little bit, you know, skewed, isn't it? There's a lot of mm -hmm. the stuff on Ancient Aliens. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You have to really like put on your bullshit detector uh, with some of that stuff. Y you and, do, uh, and, and and I mean, some of the stuff I'm talking about really sounds weird too. But but you know, every now and then you have to suspend disbelief. But not when it comes. You know, um, neither I nor Bill have any intention of doing anything other than finding material that will help him find where he's going to dig next. Yeah. That's yeah. the purpose of all this. And and yeah. he is definitely not a charismatic person that is going to want to be on television a lot or anything like that. He actually builds meditation chambers that are um that are triangles, pyramids. And mm, yeah. um and and they're amazing. But Oh yeah, that's that, 
you know, that's that's really more what he's, you know, interested in. And yet, you know, when we got into this, let's look at the Giza Plateau again, it was kind of like, well, this is fun. This is another aspect of it, and, and this, you know, gives him – a better idea as to what kind of energy these places have because because the places that he has designated really are um in, in some form some I, I would call them they're, they're definitely an energy for vortex if not a portal to another time or another place well the difference is what you guys are doing is that you're seeking you're seeking to learn and understand and experience and experiment and these other people are seeking to become rich and famous. You know, that's what they're seeking. Yeah. That's, and so that's, 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 <laughs> yeah. No, know. no. I, I think um, Bill Bill lives half the year in Portugal and half the year in, I think, Minnesota. And he does he does spend a lot of time at the Giza Plateau. And, you know, I'm retired. I have no desire to go anywhere unless it's, you know, astral traveling. I'll go that way. But, yeah. but, but, nah, I've done my traveling, I've done my playing around with, you know, big, huge crowds, and um, I've, it was fun, but I'm done. Well, but it makes sense to me, though, that, um, you know, now there will be uh, perhaps more and more people um, coming to this mode of travel, quote-unquote, um, it's because maybe for a bunch of reasons, which is that you can escape, um, you know, your current, if you have no ability to travel or whatnot, but also in a, in a sense, um, we're perhaps, um, on a subconscious level, we're not aware of, of the why, but we're maybe getting ourselves ready for this need to be able to, um, do some early exploration of other places uh, um, off Earth um, uh, in preparation for future generations and things that are going to come. You know what I mean? I, I like I totally think that when there comes a time when humans need to leave Earth. Well, there comes a time when humans do leave Earth, maybe not out of necessity initially, but perhaps out of being the pioneers. You know what I mean? Same uh -huh. same why the ones would, would originally come to North America or early settlers or this or that. Um, but at some point there will probably be a desperate need uh, to be able to relocate. And um, so to me, it's almost like uh, getting yourself, getting yourselves ready. Uh, um, uh, you know what I mean? Like, no, I think you're absolutely right, and and that's exactly what we do when we pass on. Our spirit goes into an etheric form, and then yeah. it takes on another form when it when it decides to experience a physical reality once again. So um, it, it's 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 not a concept that that is strange to us because because we actually have been doing it over and over again for millions of years, maybe even more. So right. it's it's bringing it into a more conscious um, part of our our knowingness, maybe. But it's it's yeah. it's sort of like you have the capacity to do this. You don't have to die in order to astral travel. Yeah. And I and and you know, most people think you know that's that's when you leave. You know you you pull out of the body and you move on. And that is the case, but you don't need to die. You can certainly yeah. take a short trip. And these these meditations are only maybe 20 minutes long. They're not right. real long meditations or anything like that. We, we keep it short just so that um, those people who are not meditators, um, you know, don't, don't go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, so, like, there's those, there's those ways. Um, uh so that, like, I find it interesting that there's so, um, there's uh, remote viewing, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's astral traveling, yeah. And then, and and so in both of those cases, you're, um, you're leaving your body, 
and going to those places. But in the teleporting, you're taking your body with you, theoretically, yes? Yes. Yeah, if you're teleporting, yeah. the whole physicality is, is you know, goes along for the ride. Um, in... Um, in in remote viewing, you're not leaving your body. Okay. But okay, in astral so there, traveling, you are. Okay. So there's the three different... Um, how... Uh, so are you just simply being psychic then when you're remote viewing? Yeah. I, I, I would say you're using that part of you, your consciousness, yeah. Um, remote uh, viewing is... Doing as like peeking over someone's shoulder in a way, like but you're um, while leaving your own body back at home or something like you're. Um, well, sometimes you do it in the dream state, and and it's it's in that state where you are, you know, you're dreaming, but you are looking at something else, but you're still physically in your bed in your body. Um, with the meditation, I literally take you out of body. Right. And then yeah. take you someplace. And then I put you back in. And then I put you back in. Tuck you all back in safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Makes every, make everybody wiggle their toes and their fingers and stretch and take deep breaths. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, the, um, uh, so now, um, time travel. Now, would you, would that... So now, do you think that time travel is more like teleportation or more like um, astral travel? You can you take you, the body. Well, you, know, you can you can take you can, you can time travel astrally. Okay. Yeah. But but then you are not physically present in that time frame. Yeah. Which is better. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you can't. Can't mess anything up then. <laughs> yes, that's true, and and I keep reminding people that you know you can see but are not seen, and you can you can hear but are not heard, so that so that so that they understand that they are um, oblivious to whatever is going on. I've taken them through stone walls and stuff like that because they are etheric. So. Um, yeah, it's 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 a completely different thing. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Oh, for sure. Um I think that that's Now, where do you, I correct um uh refresh my memory. Where are you at with this Middle Earth stuff? I'm fascinated by it. You I think mean, it's it, possible? I think um yes and no. I do believe there is the equivalent of a Middle Earth, but it's another dimension. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, that makes some sense. I mean, because cause we kind of know that the Middle Earth here is molten lava. Yeah, like that's where that, that's that's kind of my thinking. It's kind of a... <laughs> like a, and then they want you to believe that, like you know. But once a certain polar piece cap melts, there it's going to open up the the door to the Middle Earth, and the way you go, just slippery, just like a water slide, just slide down and and uh, you know go and see the great big alien civilization that's all set up in there. Well, I, um, I, I think there I think there is <clears throat> another dimension where there is an Earth-like planet and. The civilization is inside instead of on the outside. Like I could see how there there could be, um, you know, like before you hit Middle Earth, you know what I mean? Um, like through the caving system and all of this kind of stuff, I could see how there could be portals there, so entry points. Like I don't feel that if we have a lot of um, um, extraterrestrial travel happening, visitors coming. I don't really per perceive that they're uh, coming in spaceships. <laughs> yep. I see that they're, you know, coming through portals or some other kind of, um, you know, method of entry, like the, uh, what is like the... Stargate. Yeah, like Stargate. The, um, and... the, the, um, 
the um, pyramid in Bosnia on one of the rocks there. Hmm. Um, if I have his book close at hand, I don't usually, so don't hold your breath here. But <laughs> but I think um, in in one of the books, and it was the, it was the Bosnian pyramid book. Yep, got it. Um, in the in the tunnels that were there, there were these ceramic um, stones. Big, big boulders, ceramics. And a lot of them had um, runic-like runic lettering on them. And, and some, of the, some of them um, were close enough to actual runes, so they were able to make a translation from one of these rocks. And the translation she got from one of them said, the gateway is closed. We are at a standstill. We will have to act as warriors to defend and conquer until we can more move again through the Stargate. Huh. This is from a pyri uh, pyramid that is over 35,000 years old. Wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. And um, it, 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 it was fascinating. When I read that, I, I actually marked it <laughs> because, because it mentioned Stargate. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you know, that, that, and, and what's fascinating with, you know, some of the tunnels have been, you know, filled in, but they have proof that there have been three different cultures that have, you know, worked on these tunnels and, and used them for different um, purposes. So uh, it's amazing. But, yeah. but But they've got these these um, inscriptions all over the place. And that was just one of them that they, they saw enough, um, enough similarity so they were able to translate it. Huh. 35,000 35, years talking about a Stargate. Go figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. Which, um, which suggests that the pyramids hold the Stargate. Right. I I think there would be so many. Um, now, it doesn't have to be like this image that we see on TV of what this, this big, you know, <laughs> like what, you know what I mean? Um, no, I don't think I, it is. <laughs> And I, I think of all those things like teleportation points, um, uh, uh, same as portals, same as stargates. I, I think, yeah. like, to me, I can't distinguish a difference between, you know, between them. I don't understand. If there is a difference, I haven't or been able to understand what that might be. Well, um, I, I would have to agree with you on that because I know in, in – in a couple of these meditations, we've gone through a crude stone wall and been in tunnels that were that were highly technicalized, that were cleaned, that were polished, that had light radiating from the walls. I mean, it was like you were in a different time frame. So, so going through a stargate um, <clears throat> can be as easily easy as going through a stone wall. You know, right. you don't need all the mechanisms. You don't, <clears throat> excuse me, if level of consciousness is appropriate, and, and of course, if you're in a meditation and if you're astral traveling, then you have no body, so you don't have to worry. So you're able right. to, to just cruise on through, right. which is what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Um, I'll be really, uh, you know, because if you guys stay stay together, if this is a project of yours that you know is fairly long term, you're gonna you're gonna, I think, go to some pretty cool places and have some pretty interesting times. And uh, oh, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. So, so what a, I, I really like that idea. Um, so listen, let's do um, let's do a song break now. There's a person, Shirley, I, I 
I was just about to come to you last night and you hung up. So I don't know if you got scared off because you were only wanting to listen. Um, but Shirley, if you're calling to talk to Barbara, can you push 1-1 one, one on your phone right now just to indicate that to me? And I'll know then. And Mary Margaret, are you just listening? Um, so I'm going to, unless you push that 1-1, one, one, Shirley, whoever you are, uh, or that's who pays your phone bill. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Uh, um, then I'm going to assume you're just listening and I won't come to you. And, and Mary Margaret's just listening. So um, I'm going to come with us. So you guys uh, come up with some questions or something for in the chat or other areas. Okay, Eric's going to call. Other areas, uh, you know, that you would like us to touch on or anything like that. I'm going to give us a, a bit of a break here, a song break, and uh, since we're reaching that one hour point, and um, and then we'll uh, we'll see where we go from there. All right, we are back, and so I'm going to do a quick shout out, uh, and then um, let's see. I think we just have one caller, Eric. So uh, Barbara DeLong is our guest. Boo Boo, how are you? Uh, Diane, nice to see you as well. Uh, Shirley, <laughs> I guess you're just listening, Shirley. Uh, if you want to speak to me, push one, you know, then push one or push one one. If you push one, then you have to do that and just say hi. Uh, you're unmuting yourself if you push one. But if you push one one, it just like sends me a little alert that you're interested in talking to us. Um, Mary Margaret is there. Kathleen Moore, how you doing, Kathleen? Um, hi, Renee. When did you sneak in? And Michelle is there and Eric. Um, there as well. I could see, I knew you were, I knew you were wanting to come on, Eric. And, um, and, uh, cool. Thank you. Uh, no, I won't, Barbara. Thank you for that. Uh, so let's go get Barbara back on. And, um, and so, uh, there we go. Are you there, Barbara? I'm here. I'm here. Awesome. So, I, uh, do you want to talk to Eric? Sure, why not? <laughs> I was hoping you'd say no. What do you, I don't want to talk to him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, what, what choice do I give you right when I do it that way? But anyway, uh, we'll go get Eric. Hi, Eric. How are you? Uh, good. Uh, thanks for such the warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was more to say. It was more to say, like, what kind of a spot am I putting Barbara in? Like, she, of course, she's going to say yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, Eric, uh, Barbara doesn't have to do anything. He has been calling my shows for as long as I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Barbara's you? always interesting to hear from. Yeah, she is. Always. Never a boring conversation with Barbara DeLong. <laughs> <laughs> so how can we help Eric? <laughs> well, uh... If you're willing to do a short reading, I do have a question. Sure. Okay. Um, I have a friend who is um, – he's heading up a Brazilian branch of a charity that he's um, just now in the planning stages of. And he reached out to me about being an IT specialist for this new charity. And – uh I told him I was interested, um, but I was curious if you get any impressions about how this might go. Well, I wouldn't quit your day job. Well, I don't have one. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then you're fine. Um, I uh, my my feeling is that financially, there's not going to be a great deal of you know compensation coming your way. Um, I don't care what he says. I just know that, that, that there's not going to be a lot of money filtered your way. If you want to do this out of the goodness of your heart because it's for a charity and that you really, really believe in what the charity is, then, um, you know, go for it, but make sure that you don't leave the country because it's dangerous down there. Mm -hmm. And my feeling uh, is, have you have – you, it feels like while his intentions are great, 
it's not going to unfold as he has planned. So I would hate okay. to see you commit yourself to something that, that that may not see the light of day. Right, right. I mean, it does seem like a big question mark. Uh, I mean, uh, there seems to be a lot of work he wants uh, that they want to accomplish. But uh, he was talking about travel, and he did mention travel both to Brazil and Arizona. Um, I have other reasons to even go to Brazil just to visit him because he's a friend. But in terms of the, just the work for the charity, you know, it's still very nebulous. Uh, well, and, uh, you know, I don't really. What yeah. bothers me the most is that this will take you away from focusing on the things you need to do for you, for your own evolution and growth. Mm. And it feels as though it's it's a great way to not grow, but I don't think it's appropriate. I mean, if you can help him in your spare mm. time and not to have to do any travel, because I really feel that this will be a drain on your finances if you have any. Okay, because he said that the, all that would be cut paid for. It wouldn't be like I'm paying for the travel, but it you, you would might be a drain. To, you would have to give him a receipt. And you would only get your money back if there was money to, to share. And I don't okay. see him getting the funding he's looking for. Okay. Uh, the thing is, he's not the one who had uh, – somebody reached out to him to manage this project. So it's not like he's the one who came up with the original idea necessarily. But I, I do see how it still might not work out. Um, no, I, 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 feel, I feel strongly that, first, among other things, um, the, the, the socioeconomic problems and the, and the political problems that are going on in South America are going to make this very dangerous. Okay. So I would not get involved. Oh. Be his friend. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, it's not a good idea. Okay. I will definitely take that to heart. Um, just the uh, part two of the question, do you see anything else for me in terms of professional opportunity? Well, are you, are you, are you looking for anything? Uh, off and on. I, I, it's, uh, I guess you could say that I have. There have been times that I've been distracted from this to do uh, pursue other things. Like I've pursued other things in in financial market trading lately. So I focused more on that. Um, God, you know, I'm going to do something. I, have, that I, I, I I'm going to do something that I don't do often, and I can't even remember mm -hmm. when the last time I did this was. It was so long ago. Um, there's a, I have an astrologer that comes on my show once a month. Her name is Michelle Avanti, and her website is out there. And I think it's important that you take a look at those talents and gifts that you brought into this lifetime, and she can tell you what they are by looking at your chart. Okay. And that might give you a better idea as to directions that you need to start going in in order to be successful, in order to move into the new directions that are definitely called for over the next five years. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, I would call her and I would get a reading from her and tell her your what you're focused on. Tell her I sent you. Okay. Not sure it'll give you not sure it'll give you any but maybe it will. Um of course, if she suddenly gets a rush of 20 or 30 people that I have recommended, you know, that, that's going to be the end of her, you know, special deal for Barbara. <laughs> but, um, but, but she'll be able to take a look at your chart and tell you from past lives what talents and gifts you've brought into this lifetime that you can capitalize on. Okay. Uh, you said best to look on your show, or is there an, a, 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 what's the best no, way no, to No, I would, I would call hold. her and I would get a private reading. Okay. Um, do you, she have a website, or do you know what what's the she, best way to contact she, she her? She does. I think it's. <laughs> I think I think if you Google Michelle Avanti, you can find her. A V A N T I. Michelle with M I C H E L E. Um, 
I, I, re- I, I don't ever send people to other people, but um, I think you're just you, you're you're kind of thrashing around trying to find out what those gifts and talents were, and you're you're hitting your head against a brick wall. She can tell you what they were from your chart. Uh, well, then that's great. At least uh, I have some direction to go here. Um, yeah. If you can't I, if you can't well, find the information, email me and I'll, I'll send you her phone number. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Eric. Thanks, Chris. All right. Good luck. Take care. Um, and so there we go. Now, uh, let me see. Chat room. Uh, are you guys? I'm just looking to see if anybody has uh, put in any. No, they haven't given us any direction with what they want us to talk about. So I guess we get to talk about whatever we want to now, Barbara. What do you want sounds, to talk about? Sounds good to me. Um, well, the fact that <clears throat> the fact that. Oh, oh, really important time coming up here on, um, I think it's, it's, wait, let me look at my calendar here. It's either August 24th or 25th. There is a huge total solar eclipse going on that, that will cross the country from, I think, like Oregon to Kentucky. It will be visible in those places. And this kind of a solar eclipse um, is the forerunner of a time of um, time of uh, turmoil. And usually the length of time that it takes to um, – to cross to, to totally go black and then come come out again um, usually tells you how long that time of turmoil is going to be, mm. and it's going to be visible for five and a half hours, which means five and a half years of turmoil. Globe, well, it, it, uh, wherever it's visible, and it will be visible in the United States in those areas. So it's going to be a, a time frame where. Um, First of all, you're going to see a to- if if you're in the area that it's going to be in. <coughs> Excuse me, and it, and it is going to cross the entire country. So, um, but but I won't see it in Con- in Connecticut. Of course, and, you won't, Barbara. <laughs> I I'm I'm thinking seriously of going and visiting my son, and you won't see it either, Chris. So, uh, okay, because I can't handle it. Can't, like, you know what I mean? At some point. But me, it, it, it really, um, it, it is one of the, um, I, I think the person I spoke to that was telling me about this said in her lifetime she has never seen anything like this. And certainly wow. all, of, all of those of us who, um, who do predictions and stuff like that are seeing a time of upheaval within the country for sure. So, um, and don't even go just political. It's more than just political. So, um has nothing to do with who's in office or anything like that. It's it's I'm trying not to bring it up, Barbara. <laughs> huh? I'm trying really hard not to bring that up. <laughs> nope, don't bring it up because we're not on the same page. So don't even go there. But um, but but it has to do with with people and their philosophies and and how they look at life. It 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 will have to do with all sorts of of internal stuff going on and wrong. It will have to do with um, not necessarily, you know, at that particular time, but there will be earthquakes, there will be volcanoes, there will be all sorts of things going on as well. So that th- this is a time of, of upheaval of, of quite huge proportions. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by it because I saw the beginning of it and, um, you know, it, it's, I think, I, I in my write-up for the overview for next year, and um or this year <clears throat> so it's it's really it's it's a time that that even astrologically is being purported to be a given and and it's it's a little unsettling so 
those of you who are from, I think it's Colorado or Oregon, uh, through Kentucky, that, that swath there, you're going to be able to see something that is, that is amazing that most of us will never get a chance to see. I mean, solar eclipses, total solar, solar eclipses, while they do happen a lot, they don't often happen directly across the U.S. Yeah. So I'm getting excited it's about that. Uh, why would you be excited about like upheaval and everything like that? Why would you be excited? No, no, about not that? the upheaval, but but the total, but but a total eclipse. I mean, I've seen lunar eclipses, mm-hmm. but I've never seen a solar eclipse. Have you? Oh yeah, total solar eclipse. So you're talking the um, shadow of the moon. Yeah, sun is getting covered up, right? Totally. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Uh, I'd have to look back on the in the in the history to see where where and when. I'm pretty sure when we were kids there was one, uh, and you know the whole you know, school had to be real careful. And I remember too, like I was all defiant back then and not like not liking life anyway. And that. You know, they're all, oh, you have to look through the welder's glasses or you're going to... Um, yeah, blind yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I was all like, oh, yeah. And so I was looking at the thing and blah, blah, blah. Um, but um, I'd have to say uh, one or two. And now uh, maybe we're the full, but, uh, but I have to... I'm going to write that down and look... Um, Whoops. Okay. Uh, August twenty fourth or fifth. Okay. Fourth or fifth. You say now. How is it possible that it will be? If it's seen in North America, it should be seen in all of North America. Um, what time? What well, time? That's, see, that's I don't know. I'm perplexed by that. Like, I would think that if it's seen in North America, like, usually if it's seen in a continent, you know, in a continent, that it would be seen by most of that, you know. I can't Im- The only difference would be, like, if there were, uh, if it were happening at night or so. Well, no, it wouldn't happen at night. <laughs> it the happens sun- during the day. It's a solar eclipse, yeah. Well, no, but I mean, the sun is always somewhere, you know what I mean? Whether, you know, uh-huh. um, but I could think that, like, there could be a time when in North America, uh, like, if the east is three hours ahead of uh, of um, Pacific, you know what I mean? Yeah. That if it were happening, like, at 9 o'clock at night Pacific time, then maybe the people in the east wouldn't see it. And the people in the... But then, the no, because at that time, at that time, the sun and the moon would be in opposite sides of the sky, right? Like, generally speaking, isn't that yeah. how that works? And they would usually cross cross each other's paths sometime, depending on the time of year. But since it's, uh, it's summer, it should, should be crossing each other's paths sometime in around the noon between, you know, noon or the early afternoon, I would think. Logically, that makes sense to me. Uh, cause, yeah. Because... Don't they travel from opposite sides and then meet at some point? You know what I mean? Um, Got nothing here. That, I don't know. Yeah, hmm. I'm guessing it, it's probably... So, but yeah, like, I'm going to try and go back and look and see um, if those were uh, just partial or... I think that I had at least one full total eclipse. Um, it would be when I was a kid. Uh, I think I had one later on, too, but... Well, I think it has something to do with <clears throat> with the um, time of day, the, the you know when it happens and everything. And you know, I, I was really hoping that I might get in on the tail end of it or something, but apparently not. Very disappointed. Hmm. But um, oh. apparently there are hotels and stuff along that route that that are have been booked up for years because. This is such a big deal. So I, I don't know 
I don't know, wait, let me see. Total solar eclipse US. Um, Diddy, 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 diddy. Yeah, sorry. That's okay, that's okay. Um, um, USA history. Let's see. Um, the solar eclipse is visible from the US. I haven't been a lot. Um, it, it, uh, 1918 it was one that was seen in Alaska in 43. Okay, total total eclipse across 48 states. Um, <clears throat> there was one in 1900, which was the southeast seen in the southeast U.S. There was one in 1918 across the U.S. Uh -huh. There was one in 1923. In the southwest U.S., uh, one in 25 in the northeast U.S., one in 1930 in the western U.S., 32 in the northeast U.S., 43 in Alaska, and 45 in the northwest U.S. and Canada. There has not been a total eclipse, um, totally across the U.S. Now, there have been partial ones. Wow. But the last huh. partial one was in 1937. What? Yep. These are solar eclipses. Now there were, I mean, there have been eclipses, but partials, not totals. Huh. Yeah. Um, well, there was one, yeah, but it didn't go across the U.S. This is, this is, the thing, you know, there have they have been there, but I mean, there was one in 1970 and one in 79, but they didn't hit the U.S. In 80, one in 84, one in 80. No, these are partials, but no, this is. I mean, you may have seen a lunar eclipse for sure, but. Um, what I'm seeing here, uh, the other way, probably not. <laughs> Their eclipse counted in 1978. Let's see. Um, uh, Partial or full? I know. I'm going to. Um, magnitude, blah, blah, blah. Not seeing. Let me see. The table gives the, uh, the greatest eclipse in dynamical time. I have a grade nine science, you guys. Give me a freaking <laughs> break. Uh, <laughs> okay. I hit in Wikipedia. This, the time when the axis of the moon shadow cone passes closest to the center of the Earth. Okay, it gives total annular, partial, or hybrid. Oh my God. And for the total and annular eclipses, it gives duration of the eclipse. Um, uh, duration, okay, so those are 1901, blah, blah, blah. Am I looking at the same chart as you now? Are you on Wikipedia? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there, there's no, nothing. Coming, coming. coming. Uh, oh, a uh, total. Like 1962, uh, total, it, 1963. Did it, hope, uh, did it hit the U.S.? You, it shows the pathway. I, I don't know. First, I have to get into the right. There are little globes, the, and they show you where where it happened, and they just don't they don't travel over the U.S. the way this one is going to. Um. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I bet there are going to be a whole bunch of crazies out there calling end times. Because it's going to be five and a half hours that there is darkness. Uh, how long darkness? Five and a half hours. 
Wow. From be- no, from beginning to end, five and a half hours. Okay, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, I'm going to need to fo- be able to focus better. Uh, I can't when I'm on the air and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up down a little, but I, I think there's been something more. Now, I don't know that it would be different for, for me in Western Canada than the United States. By the sounds of it, it could be slightly different because, um, you know, there, as you were pointing out, that there were occasions where there were uh, eclipses that were visible in some parts of the country, but not other parts of the country. And so uh, it would be... Yeah, this, is, this is the track of the one that's coming. Yeah. And it, it does. It goes directly over and it misses Connecticut. Shoot. Um, <laughs> not fair. <laughs> um, interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I... I'll I'll have to get back to you on that. And it it, it I, on the on the on the link that I put in, you have to be in the shaded band to actually see it. Otherwise, it's going to be just another day. Just another day. Where's your Where's your link? Did somebody just push their one button? I heard a little noise. I put it in um. At the chat room. Do you oh. see it? Hang on, Shirley, are you there? Hello, I am here. Hi. Hi. Uh, so did you talk to Barbara? Hi, Barbara. Hi. Uh, I don't really have any specific questions. I've just listened to you a couple of times and, and trust your instincts. So I would just like sort of uh, a reading on what you can see and know about me. Sure, no problem. Um, okay, let me go from solar eclipse to Shirley. Um, <laughs> Who knows? Cake. It could be similar. No, um, I did. I did put. I did put the map for this next for the. No, 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 no! Don't type. Don't type. I have a cat sleeping on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have no idea the things that he has said. Um, <laughs> um okay. So what we've got here is is this next year for sure is going to be a time in which you're working on stretching yourself intellectually and gathering knowledge and and actually looking into and researching um, new areas of interest. It feels like this next year, this next 12 months is going to be a time where you open yourself up to, to, to letting yourself move in some new directions that you've always wanted to play with but never actually given yourself a chance to um, get involved with. I have to tell you that it's never too late to start something new uh, unless you, you know, are, are thinking of going for Miss Teenage America and, and I'm afraid, to, you know, I hate to tell you this, but you're past your prime there. So, but this is well, this Barbie thing. What? I'm, I'm teasing. I'm, you're, I'm you're, sorry. I'm teasing. You're, you're also muffled. Could you talk right into the phone? Oh, sorry. Is that more clear? Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so what you've got here is this is a time frame where where it's it's very appropriate to try a whole bunch of stuff that you've always wanted to but just never had the time to or or felt that you know it wasn't appropriate or whatever so whether it's picking up a new instrument or you're learning a new language or deciding to go back to school for something go for it because this is a wonderful time your mind is just so hungry for knowledge and wisdom it's unbelievable i'd say june is a time in which there are the, it, there is the element of new beginnings and fresh starts for you. So it's, it, this is a time where I see you rolling up your sleeves and making lists of things that you want to get involved in or, or do or experience and and sort of start. It's not like a bucket list. It's a, like I re- really want to do this and I'm going to actually commit, commit myself to it. None of this stuff that I'm seeing costs a great deal of money. It's It's more energy and it's more all sorts of, you know, cool energy that's flowing through you. July has a a lot of the element of work here. It feels as though you've really rolled up your sleeves and you're working on in new areas and on new things within your life. And and it it feels like you have set things aside and, and sort of 
said I'm not going to get to that, and I'm just going to let it go. And and I'm 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 suggesting that you don't do that with anything that you that you commit yourself to at least you know putting your toe in the water in a lot of different areas. Doesn't mean you have to go swimming, but at least try things on for size. As you come into August, this is a time where there is a sense of your creativity is really stretching and that you're allowing yourself to play in some areas that you've never played in before, whether it's um, places or things where you um, you just were too shy to, to try out. I see the element here of greater communication. I, I also feel... Um, a sense of public speaking, working with groups, speaking in front of groups, things like that. Whether whether you um, <clears throat> get involved in, <clears throat> excuse me, some sort of protests, um, you know, as far as the environment go, or whether you do community theater or something like that, it feels as though there's that element of you liking the spotlight and seeking it out in a very gentle way. And I feel that you'll really surprise yourself. Um, especially in, in working with larger groups of people because I think that you have a, a great talent and capacity here to um, impress people with your wisdom, your knowledge, and your, and your empathy. Um, as you come into September, there's a sense here of the spirituality expanding greatly so that you're becoming more and more and more um, fascinated with how the spiritual does integrate into all aspects of your life. And you're not going to be a fanatic, but you are going to expand yourself greatly in that area. It feels like energy healing is here on a great level, and it feels as though you're you're also allowing yourself to become more comfortable with some of the gifts and talents that you brought into this lifetime that you've sort of been playing with quietly but not really utilizing as greatly as you could. As you get into October, there's a sense here of the spotlight falling on you. It feels as though people are paying attention to the changes you're making in your life and you are making changes. You are going into new areas of exploration for yourself and it feels as though um, you don't do anything halfway. You, you just go overboard with most stuff, which is a very exciting thing for you. Uh, as you hit the November time frame, there are new foundations you're working from. It feels that you have kind of um, identified new areas you want to get into and play with. And, and the element of play is very important that, that um, <clears throat> we have to play in order to balance out our lives. And as you hit December, there's laughter, joy, and celebration, which is which is very exciting. It feels as though you're you're finding a new light within you that that, that radiates from you, and it illuminates not only your your life but your physicality as well. And it brings a new sense of of joy and energy to you. As you hit January, there's a a sense of crossing a threshold into new levels of understanding of this and other dimensions. I do feel that you're going to be looking at a more cosmic approach to life as opposed to the physical uh, approach. Certainly certainly, we all need to pay taxes and we have to have jobs and we have to pay our rent and stuff like that, but it feels as though your perspective is going beyond that, transcending that, and moving into a more cosmic understanding of the journey of the spirit within. As you hit February, there's a new balance among in your life especially. It does feel as though you are bringing the the um the spiritual and the intellectual um more into balance so that there is a, a greater sense of forward motion it feels as though you feel that you are in the flow and you are indeed in the flow of course oh. we we don't always stay in the flow but um you you're on that is carrying you into new areas here march is a time where you're focusing on yourself where you're expanding your horizons to a great degree and as you get into April here's where I see you kind of taking stock and, and doing a review of, of how far you've come and how far you have yet to go um, the only thing that will ever slow you down is your own doubt because you are capable of doing far more than you've given yourself credit for to this point in time and as you hit um, the May time frame next year it does feel as though that there is that life is far richer and that there are new avenues for you to explore and new venues to become a part of new people coming into your life and a shift of your focus that is really quite profound. Okay? That is wonderful. Thank you. That, thank you so much. That's wonderful. You're very, awesome. very welcome. Well, thank thanks you. for hanging around this time, Shirley. Nice to have you calling in. How did you, how did you find us? Uh, I, I'm... 
uh, Shelby Aesthetics Life, and sometimes we listen to these together. So I've I've listened to Barbara quite often and was intrigued. So I I actually was was often interested in getting a past life experience, but for whatever reason, this time I was just kind of wanting to see what she could see and feel of me. So it was beautiful. Thank you so much for calling in. Appreciate that. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take care. Uh, Don't be a stranger. We're here often. Um, Hi, Amy's joined us. How nice. I don't think she can hear us, though. (laughs) I see her name there. (laughs) Beside her, beside her name, so. Um, I apologize for the cat. No, that's funny. I, I think it's hilarious when cats get, uh, as long as, like, yesterday, oh, I did the dumbest thing. My power kept going out yesterday. It went out, like, three times. And so after the first time, and then the power came back on, and, you know, I reach over, and I have, like, my old computer tower still there. And because I never, ever did get everything off it that I need. And and it's just a hassle to hook everything back up to the old one, like the monitor and the keyboard, because it has to use a different keyboard and everything. Um, and so I just, I just like, um, what's the word? Um, uh, I'm not, I'm not doing it, you know, uh, I'm like putting it off. I'm putting it off. And uh, so anyway, I, the power comes back on. I reach over and I push the button to turn it on, and it's not coming. Like I can see the light going on the computer, but my computer screen is like black. And I'm like, I push the power button on the screen and uh, uh, on the monitor, and it looks like a little mouse thing there. And then it goes black again. And I'm like, oh my god, did did, did this power outage fry my monitor or something? What's going on? Uh-huh. So this goes on, and I try a few, and then I realize, uh, duh, I'm turning on the wrong computer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so then I get it finally back up and going again, and I'm there long enough for the power to go back out again. Uh, and um, so then I got it, uh, the power went out, and then this time I knew what computer to turn on. And... Uh, and the third time I got, I'm all like, what in the hell is going on, you know? And I guess some um, crane operator hit a wire, an overhead wire or something, and it took many, many blocks of power. Well, that's, that's that, not as bad as the time I tried to um, change change the... Um, Station on my no, I I tried to answer my remote control when the phone rang. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's very yeah. funny. <laughs> I, I've gone to put strange things in the fridge. That's uh-huh. why when someone says um, uh, when somebody says like I've misplaced such and such a thing, I'm like check the freezer, or check the fridge, <laughs> and they're like looking at me. <clears throat> I've done that. I've put ice cream in the cupboard, and I've put boxes in the refrigerator. You know, I've just kind of, you you get to the place where you're exhausted, you're tired, and you're just slamming things wherever you can. And it it was really messy because the ice cream melted all over everything. That reminds me of uh, um, Kim Kim Justice, uh, the brain injury radio lady. Uh, Yeah. That's your first clue. <laughs> I'm mean, like, she got an ice cream cake, and um, she, like, uh, left it out on the counter, the whole, all, so then they went out, and they did such a thing, and then they come back, and this whole ice cream cake was melted all over the damn counter and floor and everything like that, and we're like, oh, my God. Yeah, you're supposed to keep those in the freezer until it's time to eat them, hey? <laughs> you're yeah. not supposed to thaw, you're not supposed to thaw them out. And um so I don't know if she had in her mind that it was just a frozen cake that needed thawing or what, but um that was well, that, it. she'll never I've got I've got a TV remote, I've got <clears throat> the the Bluetooth remote, I've got um the the universal remote and I've got the sound box remote. 
And every now and then, I, I swear something is broken and I realize I've either got the wrong remote in my hand or it's upside down and I'm pushing the wrong button. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very it's discouraging. I have like um, my uh, DVR, and like last year my DVR went all kaputzy on me. It was kept on like sh sh shutting itself off, and and this would happen, you know, maybe once every few weeks, and it was annoying. And then it started to happen more and more frequently, and then and then near the end it was happening like multiple times in a day, and of course then. It takes a day for all of the TV listings to catch up, and and so it was just in this permanent state of just, you know, it wasn't what. So so I got a used one um, that was the same make and model and everything, and uh, so it's the same uh, remote control, but yet uh, the one remote control uh, doesn't work. Uh, like for the volume and this and that, and so like I have. And then my other one, uh, my older remote, like I can't push the one button to see all the channels. And so I have to use both of them. And I almost always have the wrong one near me when I need to turn the volume down. Or uh, if I want to check, I always have the wrong one within my reach, you know, because it's a different one I need to use for the volume. Or even though they're the same remote, you know, I have oh, yeah. to use one for the volume and one for the for the TV channels, you know, and it, it just always uh, always the one that I need is not the one that's in nearby. <laughs> it's just like Murphy's Law, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that. and my TV went crazy the other night. And it, you know, the channels were just flying by, and I, I oh. thought, oh, great, you know, I've really wrecked this bad, and I kept looking for the remote to, to see if I could fix it. And this silly cat was laying on it. And oh, hilarious. Yeah, he's he's definitely. Um, let me see if I can. I don't know if I this will work or not. This is is because let's see. Okay, webcam settings. Start sharing. No, no webcam is available. Okay. Well, oh, I don't that know. Yeah. Every now and then that happens to me, and what I do is I open my webcam separately, go as if I'm going to take a picture, and then I close it, and then suddenly it works. Like I, I can't figure it out. But um, well, I was going to try to show it, but it's definitely not letting me. So that's okay. The cat's go. The cat is interfering with it again. You know that cat. The cat yeah, yeah. is your, your telecommunications. Uh, I have problem. these two. I have these two kittens, and. You know, one is just the most delicate, dainty little thing you ever saw, and the other is totally the biggest klutz that ever lived. That you know, <laughs> I think they they took turns standing in line for things because th this cat will go to jump over my face and land on my face. <laughs> and the other one can leap leap buildings in a single bound, but. Yeah. But the, the klutz is just, I mean, when he runs, you hear it. The, he thunders, and she just tippy, 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 tippy. And he is just dump, dump, dump. It's just, nice. it's just, it's remarkable. I mean, they're charming. They're lovely. I, I, I adore them, but, but he is a klutz. <laughs> Pussyfoot does not apply to him. He has combat boots on. So how do you have any more of the old the older cats still? You got a couple I have, more of them? Uh, I have a ten year old who is um you know slowly getting used to these two. I mean he's yeah. he's really great. I mean he's you know, he hasn't been obnoxious or anything to them. Um and, and he does try. But you yeah. know, he, he just looks askance at them, you know, when <laughs> they do some of their stuff. You know, it's like you must be kidding me. <laughs> you know? uh, and every now and then he'll give me a look like, what were you thinking, woman? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's so funny. That's so uh, funny. Well, you know, after having nine cats here, to be down to one, the house felt empty. And I'm sure. it had to be kittens. It just had to be kittens. 
And because, um, frankly, you know, my cats go to 17 to 20. So, you know, I... I didn't want. I mean, I I, sh I should have probably. Rest, I can't. I couldn't bring another adult cat in with a ten year old, but I could bring kittens in. Yeah. Because he wasn't. He wouldn't kill them. Oh, yeah. Well, that's always the worry, you know. Um, that's always been my worry with cats and dogs too, you know. But I think if if I ever do do this, I want to get a kitten and a puppy dog the same day. You know what I mean? And bring them both home the same day. And uh so they and grow then, up together, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that would be the best, the best. Because otherwise, yeah. like kids are just effing mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like poor little puppy dog just wants to play, and the cat is you know busy tearing its retinas out. You know. I I uh, have uh, I've had cats and dogs together, and every dog I have ever had has had a scar on its nose. From the one oh, yeah. time it tried to to uh, convince the cat that it was the alpha, and yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, just it, it takes one scratch and the dog learns. Cats rule. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so now, uh, so we have just five minutes left. Uh, tell people where they can find you uh, Monday nights still. Mon yeah, Monday nights on freedomslips dot com. Uh, it's still nightlight, and if you want to catch up on the interviews and the shows that I've done, they're um, all on the front page. Well, at least 50 or 60 of them are on the player on the front page of my website, and that's barbaradelong.com. And if you're interested in being a part of the Star Points Meditations, um, just send me an email at barbaradelong at gmail.com, and I'll plug you in, and, and uh, you can you can play with us. Awesome. Here's Barbara's uh, link to her radio show and uh, BarbaraDeLong.com. You guys can find that. That's All those links are on the show page as well. Uh, but I'll give you guys the, because you're lazy. A lot of these guys are lazy, Barbara, our <laughs> listeners. And, uh, <laughs> and here, I'll give them even the hyperlink, though. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> That'll that'll actually you don't have to copy because I know it's a lot of work to copy and paste the link. So I'll give you the hyperlink, you guys. So um, so that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna um, send email Barbara. I have I have the in oh actually I have the info you sent me so that's perfect. Let me let me sort that out and. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Um, look forward to hearing uh, more about uh, the adventures of your group. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It really and and it, the meditation itself, uh, <clears throat> the Star Point meditations are um, once a week on Thursday at 3 p.m. But you'll also have um, if you if you aren't available then. Um, you will get the address for the archive, so you can listen to it in archive and take take you know take part of it there. It's the, the the meditation is the same, and it just leads you on. So um, if you're not available, it's, I I put it at 3 p.m. so the people in Australia and the and the um, Great Britain would be able to take part in them, and um, and they're once a week, Thursdays at three. But if you're a member of the group, you can listen to it anytime you want to because there'll be an archive and it's it's a private show so that, you know, if you go to Blog Talk and look for it, you won't find it. You have to be a right. member of the group to get into the archives. Perfect. Awesome. And it costs nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing except your willingness to explore new exciting things and uh, that's, that's, a, that's an easy price to pay. So, um um, so then I guess it's supper time for us both, Barbara. Guess so. And so thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to check that, uh, all that stuff out. I, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun um, uh, checking that out. So thank you, you very you much. You will much kind of ignore the first one, but the others are interesting. I, I, well, I won't exactly ignore, but uh, I get your point. Um, so until the next time then. Uh, it, it, Enjoy the rest of your June, 
And I guess it'll be like the dog days of summer by the time we talk again. <laughs> yes, I will talk to you in July. Betcha. Thanks so much, Barbara. Good night now. All right, you take care. Everybody else, uh, thank you, thank you. Tomorrow, Jen Young is off, and um, I'll try and see if I can find something to replace uh, Salva for Friday, okay? So uh, I'm going to head out of here and go eat and then get some rest on the couch. So um, peace out. Thank you very much. We're going in three, two, one. See you guys.